So, you got a bill going through right now. You know, it basically allows the people of the county to vote if you want to be annexed or not annexed. Wholeheartedly, without any question, I am a thousand percent supportive of that. I think the people should vote if they want to vote as to whether or not they ought to be annexed or not annexed. You know, from the standpoint of things that are at play that I know that you're concerned with, you know, I would be the first to stand up on the very top of the mountain and say, if, if we can get rid of this machinery and inventory tax, if we can get rid of it and you not be hurt, in fact, you benefit greatly from it, and we can afford it, I'd be the first person to stand up and say, I'm all in. I'm all in. Now, what did I say there? What I said there is just simply this. We've got to be able to afford, and we've got to be able for you to be pleased. we got to do that. Now, if we can't, then I'm not standing up there. That's what it has to be. You know, it's just as simple as just that. And we can ask me 50 million questions and all that kind of stuff. I do think there's a methodology here some way, somehow, that we can get rid of something that would give us the opportunity because there is real potential, the underline, potential, 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 underline, 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 benefit. There's potential real benefit from the standpoint of the attraction of manufacturing and all this stuff on petrochemicals, real guys. It's as real as real could get. All the stuff about the alternative uses for coal are real. They're real. So absolutely, the attraction to West Virginia, one of, I don't know, 12 to 15 states that still has this tax, it's, a, it's an impediment. It really is. Now, we can't just do something in hopes without you being all in. So, we got some work to do there. We got a lot of work to do there. We got different proposals on the table. Everybody knows exactly where I'm at. You know. Now, I don't really know what else to say to you other than just to thank you. Thank you for all you do every day. Know this, and I say it, I say it proudly. When I was a little teen fella, maybe this big, I was born about that big. <laughs> you know, but, but we we were living in a rented house, a white frame house on the end of Ford Street, dead end road in Beckley, West Virginia. We're right across the road, there's a little cemetery there, and that's where I played all the time. Now, my grandparents, every time I visited them, they never had any little plumbing. My dad was an only child. My grandparents on that side had a coal furnace right in the middle of the house. You had to jump across at night or you'd step on it and burn your feet. You know, Copperston, West Virginia, Huff Mountain. In all honesty, I have been you all my life. And I have been the people of your county all my life. And I absolutely will never change. Never. I want goodness for all those. I don't want them left out. And so, I said before, irregardless of what you may think, I'm with you, I've been with you, I won't change, and uh, the state is moving in a great way, and there's many, many, many opportunities that we have got right at our fingertips. Last thing I'd say, and then if you choose to ask something, I'll try to answer it as best I can. The last thing I'd say is just this. 
If we've ever, you've heard me say this before, but if we've ever on the planet had the stars lined up our way, it's right now. It's just right now. You know, just think. We've, you've got a governor that is the best buds with the guy that is the most powerful man in the whole world. The guy that is the running the free world. Donald Trump. You got a governor that just happens to be his best bud. And in all of that, we have a federal infrastructure program that is right at our fingertips. We have got someone that believes, totally believes, from a petrochemical standpoint, that the, that the exposure in the Gulf, all the eggs in one spot, is probably not wise. You have absolutely so many things that are right there, just right there for the taking. You know, a, a president to pick the phone up and call little Jimmy Justice from Forest Street that was skinny at one time, and had brown hair at one time, and calls me and says, Big Jim, no, in fact, that day he said, Jim, and I knew something was up because he's usually screaming, Big Jim, Big Jim, how you doing? And it was serious. He said, I have the deputy premier of China right here, and I have the ambassador of China right here, and I want you to head up this transaction in regard to coal. And it's a big transaction. It could be. He says it is. It's done. Now, in heading that up, you know, what I would do is I would call in all the producers of West Virginia and then I would introduce and make that and let them do whatever they choose to do. Now, but just think about this. That transaction is for 9 million tons of metallurgical coal and 16 million tons of thermal coal. Now what does that really mean? Today in West Virginia we're producing about 21 million tons of thermal coal, uh, of metallurgical coal. It's half. It's half of what we're producing today. And on the thermal side, it is not half, but it's probably approaching 25%. It would really help West Virginia. Unbelievable. And then he said, and Jim, I want all of that coal to be bought and turn to the Chinese. I want all that coal to be bought in West Virginia. Honest to goodness. I mean, that's what we have at our fingertips. That's the relationship we have. That's the hope we have. And will it all materialize? Probably not. But the opportunities are unbelievable. They're unbelievable. So, I would just again close by saying thank you for all you do. You got a big guy here that's in your court. He's been in your court. He won't change. There's lots of you in this room that are real friends. And I would say God bless. And then if you want to ask me something, have that. Yes, ma'am. standpoint of Governor Justice help us in any way, shape, form, or fashion to be able to get those pipelines through and all that kind of stuff. Let me tell you, you know, I, I am a real advocate of that. I am a real advocate because, you know, I truly believe without any question we have the cheapest natural gas, the most abundant natural gas, and the net of the whole thing is this. Let me say what you want, please. Just, you want me to always tell you the truth, I hope. You know, because that's all I'm going to do. 
You're not going to catch me telling you something that I knowingly know is not the truth. There's no way. There's no possibility. Now, here's the deal. Our natural gas producers today are producing gas and price is less than $2. And, and the $2 is a NYMEX price. And, and the last go around that I checked, which was not very many days ago, it was $1.88. But by the time it equates back to us in West Virginia, it's probably a dollar. Now, and to do that and stay alive is very difficult on our gas producers today. Whether you like them or you don't like them, it's very difficult. But we got to like them because of all the goodness that they're bringing to all of us everywhere, all the time. So I don't really like them. I love them. And I want to make things better and better and better and better and better for them. Now look, for them to be able to tread water at a dollar eighty-eight NYMEX price, they're going, they're treading as hard as they can, and they're treading and they're treading and they're treading. But at some point in time, they're going to get tired of treading, and they're going to drown. Well, we can't afford them to drown. There's no way. One of the things that we've got to do, I mean, it's going to boil right down to this, and that's all there is to it. At some point in time, we will have petrochemical manufacturing in West Virginia, and we will have the ability to use some of our own gas, and it'll be great. Will that save us? No, it won't do it. It won't save the resource that we have. And the other part of the resource is just this, is our country being energy self-sufficient is a boom like you can't imagine. But that gas has got to be exported. It has to be exported. Now, the only way you're going to export is the pipelines. It's all there is to it. It's just as simple as that. So, we have to be for that. And, and you know, that's hung up right now. And, or it's a blessing that it's with our Supreme Court. You know, we'll see what happens in April. You know, our president and everybody in the world knows exactly where I stand and everything. We can't influence the Supreme Court, but I think we're going to come out with a good ruling there, and I hope it's going to be good. Yes, sir. Governor, I hope you can hear me. You talked about being on a mountaintop, willing to yell down if it was affordable and if counties would support it, uh, and there would be some potential underlined, underlined, underlined benefits. I have something else for you if you'd be willing to yell it that I guarantee you every commissioner in this room would be in support of. And it wouldn't be potential benefits, it would be real, real underlying, underlying benefits that we would experience immediately. Is if you would yell from the mountaintop that, read that uh, county commissions no longer have to pay regional jail bills. city and I understand they go to a regional jail and you pay a fee every day. Now, there are those, now again, we're going to talk dead flat truth again, okay? There are those out in the wilderness that believe that there's people that are sitting there in jails and you're paying for it and they're sitting there and really and truly they've not even been been through the paperwork or prosecuted or whatever it may be and are just in a holding pattern you're paying for. And we can improve upon that. Okay? Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say that's a tick over here on this side. Okay? Then there's people that are there that are, you know, on crimes that we really and truly could some way, somehow process, you know, you know, process them and get them through the whole process and then they maybe don't need to be there. So that's another little teeny tick. And at the end of the day, there are those that believe that those ticks could add up 
to such a significant number that it would really lower the impact of the burden that you're carrying. And that's hogwash in my book. That's just hogwash. You're going, those ticks are going to mean something, but if you're paying $50 a day, those ticks are going to maybe give us five or three or a dollar. They're also going to give us the opportunity, if we don't watch out, somebody's arrested in your backyard doing something that's really bad and we process them in two and a half minutes and let them go and they're back in your backyard and before you know it, we've got a food pipe on our hands like you can't imagine. So the, the answer, don't fall prey to that answer because that answer will make us better and it will and it give us the ability to get cheaper, but it will not solve your dilemma. And your dilemma has to be solved one or two ways. It's got to be funded. It's got to be funded. And it's either got to be funded with the state stepping in and helping substantially, or the city stepping in and helping substantially. That's all there is to this issue. It's just as simple as that. The cities, if they arrest somebody and send them off and everything else, the cities are going to have to participate, or the state's going to have to participate, or the counties are going to have to just carry it. We can tweak it to make it better of how we process people, and how we expedite the thing, and we can cut out the waste, and we can have, we can make it better. But I'm telling you, that's not going to solve it. It's going to take the state bailing up to the bar, or the cities helping to participate, or the counties being able to just carry the burden. I'll do everything I possibly can from the standpoint of finding some way, somehow, for the state to help carry some of the burden. Because I, I got it, I get it, that your, you, that level of your burden is probably a very, very significant amount of your budget, and it's getting more and more and more and more. And we could do this. We could say, everybody that comes to a regional jail that their first name's Jim, we're going to let them go automatically. We're just going to let them go. No matter what they do, we're going to let them go. So the county's going to have to pay for it. And I'm telling you, that's going to be a tick. Because there's a heck of a lot more people coming there that aren't named Jim than are named Jim. You know, and so that's not going to solve it. What's going to have to happen here is exactly what I'm talking about. The state, the state is going to have to dedicate resources directly to being able to aid and help in that problem. At the end of the day, whether it's the cities or the counties, the last time I checked, those counties and cities were all in West Virginia. So it's the state's issue. It's the state's problem. And so we want the cities to be able to help, sure. We want the counties to be able to help, sure. But at the same time, the state's going to have to step up. Okay. Governor? Yes, sir. You recently started a program called Jim's Dream, I believe. Is that correct? Is that name something else? It does. Well, my daughter-in-law works for in that program now. She worked out of workforce and they transferred her into your program. And I was wondering how that program is coming and it's not that old and how what's what's your goal there? Okay. They changed the name to Jobs and Hope. Because you can't have I don't know, it's the craziest stuff in the world. You can't have a politician's name on the thing and whatever, okay? So it's called Jobs and Hope. Basically what it was, was it was a, an attempt to curb this terrible epidemic that's eating us alive with the drugs. And what it also was, was an, an attempt to be able to help us to train our people to be able to do real stuff. So basically what we said is that we're going to have treatment for free and we're going to have training for free. And if you do both and you do really good and you pass drug tests and all that kind of stuff, we can have some level of expungement 
or some level to get your driver's license back. Basically, we want you back. And we're going to really try to get you back. Okay, so, so we put the thing together. The legislature was kind enough to fund it. And off we go. Now, in a little more than three months, we've processed 1,500 people. 1,500 people. And it's killing it. It's just not working. It's killing it. And it's absolutely going like great guns. Now, we're not talking about six people. The National Guard's involved in doing great work and all that kind of stuff. But let me tell you, those are the components that I put up on the board in my state of state. It took a little while to get it all processed and all put together and everything. And I think we got it all in motion in October. And boom, here we go. But the other component was brought to it that I didn't have in my thing, which was a genius. And that's why when we collaborate and everybody, everybody can put in thoughts, it really helps. Is that is the transition agents. And maybe your daughter's a transition agent. Now, unbelievable what that component does. Because that component gives the person that is there a one-on-one. -on -one all the time and they follow them and they help them they help them not only through the whole process but then they help them after they go out in the workforce it's really working and those transition agents are doing fabulous work really really good i mean it's really the real deal now is it going to solve the entire drug epidemic no way but it's really helping i always take time to just say this there's another thing out there that is, to me, and, and I don't say this because of my wife in any way, shape, form, or fashion, because just to tell the honest truth, Kathy nor I knew doodly about communities and schools. We didn't. We didn't know hardly anything about it. And then all of a sudden, Kathy was looking for a place to have a cause, to have a purpose almost of what she was doing. We didn't have any money. The only place we knew anything about communities and school was, schools were, were in Greenbrier County, and they were doing a really nice job there. 100% graduation rate. It was amazing. <laughs> with with at-risk kids that were having all kinds of problems. So then, communities and schools was started because that's where I donated my salary to go to. And we started it. And then all of a sudden, the legislature gave us some real money, and we got it rolling even more. Now it's in 12 or 15 counties. I don't know what it is. But get this. There's 28,000 kids that they're working with today. Now, those kids, if you go to schools and you go to the teachers, you know, and now what we're trying to do is expand that program to a bigger part of the state and more and more and more counties. Eventually, what we want to do is get it in all the counties. And one of the national members that's on the board, Shaq. Well, I didn't know that when we started all this. But Shaquille O'Neal's on it and everything, and it is truly amazing. Because here's the thing. You had a student that was really a problem child, maybe in a classroom, and holding all, a lot of people back. And maybe they were hungry, or maybe they were cold, or maybe their mom and dads were just drugs beyond belief, or maybe whatever the problem may have been. And now we're not only helping that kid, and that kid is achieving, but we're helping everybody else too. And the other thing about Jobs and Hope is just this. Remember, it's treatment and it's training, real training. Not teaching you how to drive a pickup truck when, you, when you're going to apply for a job on heavy equipment and need how to be able to drive a 777 rock truck. It's real training. But the other great part about it is this is if you don't have a drug problem whatsoever and you want to come and just do the training, it's open for everybody to just do that as well. It's really good. It's working. Thank you. for Is it your daughter or daughter-in-law? Daughter-in-law. Daughter-in-law. Yeah. Tell her thank you for all she's doing. Yes, ma'am. Governor Justice, on behalf of Preston County, I would like to not only recognize but thank you for the work on the roads in our county and surrounding counties that I'm aware of. And also, I'd like to thank you in advance for the promise that you've made to, and the commitment not only to uh, work uh, alongside the uh, Department of Transportation to ensure that the work will continue and that we will be able to make that progress. Thank you. Well, we're sure going to stay after. I will absolutely assure you that everybody here 
You know, I heard a statement the other day out of the legislature. I never thought I'd ever dream to hear it, you know. But they said, every person in our caucus would probably say that in their areas, no one has a complaint about what's going on with the roads. You know, that isn't perfect. It's nowhere close to perfect. But compared to where we were, we're after it. And we're getting it done. And, that, and now, with what we did with this great man and all his people and Dave Hardy and all of, you know, for the Secretary of Revenue and all the stuff that they just did in the second bonding going out and all that kind of stuff, you know, we picked up an extra $146.5 million dollars and we can just pump more and more and more money into our secondary roads and just keep doing what we're doing. And I'm telling you, right on the cusp of all that, you mark it down, mark it down. Right on the cusp of what we've done is coming at some point in time here. It still may be a year away, but at some point in time, real soon here, is going to be a federal infrastructure program. And at that point in time, we just keep going and going and going. You know, it's going to be good stuff. Good stuff. If you don't have any other questions, I'm out of here. You noticed this school held me up, didn't you? <laughs> Thank y'all.